Okay, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Um, it, we have an hour and I'd like for us to, I'm, I'm gonna go through quite a bit. We'll see what we can get through. And certainly if you want to work along with me, I'm gonna work fairly quickly. Um, I also have a print. I have um, written out notes from this meeting and I'm also recording it. We're, we'll put it on a YouTube for our group. Um, I also sent you a link to Padlet that we can put our um, pieces on in progress. Uh, we're going to do a lot of samples first and uh, we have six sessions. So with that, I'll take my nifty mixed media sign down and we'll go ahead and get started. Oh, did I mention you'll have homework? So um, mm -hmm. <laughs> if you don't, mm -hmm. if you want to follow along, and, uh, but if you want to also catch up, but there's some things I'm not going to, you're not going to be able to do today because you needed some prep work. We have plenty to do. So we'll get started here. And uh, the first thing we're going to play with is, and I'll lay out some samples here, are some um, working with paint and mixed with gesso. The gesso is a, used to, if you're not familiar with it, it's used to prime, it's kind of hard to see that one because it's very faint, but it's, um, it's an uneven kind of look to the surface. Um, stamping, we'll go through these. This is bubble wrap, that's another kind of hard to see. Um, this is that combing, I don't know if you can see that very well. This is a better combing one. And then, um, but gesso is used to prime canvases so that you, uh, it doesn't soak into your canvas surface. And um, layers of gesso and sanding will make a, a canvas perfectly smooth. So it adds some body to the paint and a little fluidity. Here's a couple more that I'll just lay out here. So we're going to start with our, I think this is a good size. What I actually thought about myself is saving um, half of this sample and use the other half, cut it down and may, maybe use it for a base for an artist card. I think that would be fun to have something to start with rather than just blank paper. So there's the thought. So we're going to um, use two pieces to start and I have mixed up uh, think about your colors. I have mixed up some colors that I like and uh, about half and half with gesso. You can try different amounts just to see how it goes. It'll make it flow a little more. So two pieces I'm just going to paint um, completely with uh, the, the gesso and paint. I'm not really worrying about anything. These are going to be used. We're going to let these dry and we'll use these um, for our homework. So these pieces are ones that we, I have done a surface over. And so, um, for example, I'm gonna stick my finger in it. Uh, for example, this combing one, uh, the blue underneath was done and let dry and then do a wet over and comb it. So that's one example we'll be doing. And, um, I'm probably just going to do two in the same color. So that's, we just want to let those dry and see, um, use those later. So I'll finish this up. And uh, the brushes I ask you to get, just something, you know, nothing fancy. Um, I, when I'm doing mixed media, I don't know how you are, Rob, but when I'm doing mixed media, I tend to go through brushes pretty quickly. I'm not very... Um, it's not like painting, a, a, a oil painting or something. I might stick it in glue and I might, you know, I, I don't want anything big and cheap is just fine. So there's those two painted. And then the next, um, the next things we're going to do is we're going to create some more different types of surfaces. And one, this was done with masking tape. So you can take and make a design or that was this was kind of I have to tell you these small pieces of tape were a little harder to get off 
So this time I'm just going to do some big paste pieces and just kind of a random design. Think of this as a first layer. So again, you don't have to have anything too fancy. I'm just going to go with um, just some random, like I say, random pieces. And then I'm going to grab a different brush. And I'm going to do some green over this. You want to make sure your tape is down so it doesn't go underneath the edges. And then we'll, we'll just cover that over. And when it's dry, that's when you'll peel off the tape. So these are um, acting as resists in a little bit different way. And that makes it some open spaces so when you come back in with a second color, you have a, an area that has uh, will be just that color and then where it goes over the green or the painted it will um, com kind of combine with that. So there's that. And then for a second, the next piece I'm going to just use a sponge and the sponge you want to get the sponge wet and just damp, if it will dampen. My sponges have been around the block, so it's kind of getting damp. Um, and then, you know, just have some fun with it. I, I kind of loaded up the, bra, the sponge, and I, I'm just giving some texture in different ways. I might do thick and thin. Doesn't really... Um, just give it something to, some kind of different background. Like I say, these are just starting pieces and just creating papers that you can work with in different ways later on. And, but it's nice to have these samples and um, the ones I already made, I went ahead and wrote on the back of it on the one half so that I can keep them and refer to them if I want to see how did I do that? Which is awfully nice um, when you're making art to be able to go back and look and say, oh yeah, I remember how, this is how I, not I remember, but read it. Oh yeah, that's how I did that. Here it is on here, exactly what I did. Um, so just a little tip. So that's the sponge. And then um, a, another piece we can use, I have collected some objects, this bubble wrap, um, I, this was a child's toy, um, I didn't rip it out of the hands of a child, uh, I bought it just for me, so um, that, I'm going to go ahead and use the square, and I'm going to try the green this time, and printing well, actually, I dipped it in, but that really didn't work very well. Um, so, really, it's better if you paint it on. Well, I don't know, better. Um, depends on what you want, but it would have been less messy. And I'm not going to be too concerned with exactly how it prints out. The, again, thinking this of this as a second layer. So, I mean a first layer, and adding a second layer. But it gives it a different, kind of an interesting surface texture to come back and work on, which is always good. See, these are quick and easy and pretty fun to, to just make, and, and then you can... I like components really well in my own work, um, even, even sculpture, and so having all these components at your fingertips feels like you're really rich with artwork, um, art stuff. So like papers and stuff, um, you would, could just put, grab something and cut it up and it'd be great to have on hand. Um, so how are we doing? Rob, are you doing okay? Yeah, so far. Okay. I didn't really give you time to mix paints, but um, so the, the next one, um, graining combs. Um, they call that's what they call them in the hardware store. But I made combs. This is these are um, styrofoam plates that I use the the pinking shears 
and just cut an edge on there. And so it, it gives me a, hand, a homemade graining comb. So to do the graining comb, I would just um, kind of thickly put paint on a piece and then I can swirl through it with my graining comb. One of the pieces that I already made that's gonna dry, the second layer, we're gonna come back through that second layer uh, with the graining comb. So that's, that's a, I, I find that a really fun tool. And you can use um, yogurt lids, cottage cheese, anything like that, plastic lids, big plastic lids. And so just comb through it. And I like to do a couple of different things. You can zigzag through it. I just did some, some wavy, some wavy gravy. Can you see that okay? Yeah. Okay. So that's, that's what I did. Um, I, I like that tool a lot. Um, just because it's so cheap. <laughs> you can't beat you can't beat that. Can you get rid of that? Okay. So next, next we're going to do. Oh, this one's a fun one. So I'm gonna. I shouldn't have started the laundry. Okay. So next I'm going to do two pieces. you. I, I'm going to use, um, what haven't I used yet? I haven't used my blue. No. I'm going to use the blue and I'm just going to dump some on there. And we're just going to paint the entire piece with one, one piece with one color and the second piece with another color, just solid. Kind of thick. Make it nice and thick, juicy. Don't be skimpy. And we're going to, okay, there's my blue. All right, I'm really into blue and green right now. Um, but this orange is a nice, a nice, or kind of a tomato red. It's, I it's, a, it's a nice, um, a nice contrast. Okay, so, and again, just gooping that on, get it nice and thick. And then I'm going to take, I'll just take my blue piece, and I'm gonna, going to just put that on top of my second piece, kind of smush them together a little, and then pull it apart. And I've got two different pieces out of one. Oh, that's kind of a that's kind of interesting color scheme. I hadn't thought about it being so red, red, white, and blue, but maybe a little white on there. So those textures are when they dry will continue to be that kind of um, ripply, which will be fun. Okay. Um, We have two more. So um, this one, I'll use up my blue. Let's see if I can make that last. I might just. Uh, I like to mix and match, so I'm not. I don't really have enough blue, so I'm going to just throw some of this green in the blue and see what new color I come up with. I'll do green. Kind of an aqua here. And yeah, I kind of like that. And I'm going to paint it on rather thick. Uh, again, this, these pieces I, this is another reason I like it is because we're just, we're just slabbing all this paint on here. It feels like, it feels fun. It feels delicious to be thickly adhering uh, ad ad all this paint. Okay, and then um, 
I'm just going to take the end of a. Let's see. I'm going to take the end of a brush, brush handle here, and I'm going to write in it. You can write or draw, whichever. Sometimes I just, um, you know, I just do automatic writing, so it's kind of, maybe it's not even really legible. Well, it isn't legible. So then we have um, kind of like that. And you'll see the difference when you do the, the piece with the, a, a different undercoating over. It's a little more, um, it's a little more visible. And then our last piece, we're going to, see I have enough of the red, the orangey red here. Um, we're gonna put it on and we're going to, nice and thick. I said it was gonna be messy and by golly I was right. And then um, I am just going to pick you can, any kind of object. I just happen to have a little, uh, I don't know, orange juice bottle lid here. And so I like to just kind of press it in there. Um, you can see if I press it in, I've got kind of those uh, circle shapes going. I can scrape with it. So I get a different look altogether with the scraping. Um, swirling, you can kind of swirl it and give it even another look. So all these things give it texture. And we're patterning. Just think of this as just, just papers that, uh, all those papers you, we might buy. Well, here we go. we got all this great pattern paper now. So that takes us through painting with gesso and paint and acrylic paint and let's see I might just need to wipe this up a little we're going to switch gears a little bit so hey that only took 15 minutes we're doing good you need a minute to catch up anybody mm -hmm. anybody need a minute to catch up Betsy, I didn't catch that on the beginning. What kind of paper are you using? Watercolor paper. Okay, I, thanks. Yeah. Just in, inexpensive because these are samples. And, and where did you get picture? The, the watercolor. Where did you get the little mixing bowls? Mm -hmm. Oh, these bowls, um, they were just left over in the library from something. Um, this is a different. Yeah, I. It, it, anything will work. Do that. Anything will work if you uh, just bowls or um, I. I also brought up these. I kind of like these plates. So you just pressed a penny. I like these little, but they're throwaways. So I hate to waste too much. It is. Probably would have been valuable, more valuable if they hadn't pressed it. Did you think? Yeah. Okay. So uh, the next thing, so I talked about gesso, any, any kind of, and the gesso does come in clear. I, I use the um, acrylic gesso, I use the white. It comes in clear and black. Uh, I use the white just because I kind of like the, um, well actually just because I had it, to be honest. Um, I kind of like the difference, and later on you'll, hi Lonnie. Hi, how you doing? Good. Later on you'll, um, You'll see another use for this uh, white, but you can always add white acrylic. Okay, so we're just starting another. Okay. It's my art class because he's talking. Okay. Okay, guys. Um, we're going to move to pay yeah. the paper. So we're going to do this on the watercolor paper again. And these are just some samples of uh, what, what we're doing. I mean, there's lots of different things you can do with paper. But uh, these are, again, just some fun things to do some samples. Uh, these are a, a strip of paper. And uh, we're 
Oh, it, it, Dale. Dale, can you mute your, please? Dale? Yeah, can you mute it, please? Mute me? Okay. Yeah, yeah just for them while I'm talking. Okay, so torn paper is a way to create. You can cut, you can use fancy scissors, you can burn paper in different ways. So lots of different ways you can treat paper. And of course, papers come in lots of different different ways. There's junk mail. Uh, this was an old book of music that was left over for my kids when they were learning to play piano and nobody wanted it anymore. Um, this is from... Part of this is craft paper and part of this is from a floral magazine. So lots of different types of paper. Um, this, this is another example we're gonna do is the tissue. This, this tissue was in some kind of wrapping so it had a little design to it yet too. And then uh, some fun, if you have stamps uh, to cut with, uh, not stamps, um, punches, to cut with, that's fine, but I'll show you how I did mine. I didn't use a, I don't have punches. And uh, this one goes with it, so this is what I cut out of it. And you can kind of tell how I did it. So those are a couple of different things. Um, these are some, um, just some, oh, these all are. Uh, this is just torn scraps, just randomly thrown on. And these are all um, handmade papers. So they're fun to work with too. It's whatever, whatever uh, you have and uh, that works great. It's a great time to use up some of those papers. So let's see, where's my samples? Okay, so we're gonna use the matte medium this time. And the matte medium is, um, is different than the gesso because it is, let me make sure it's open. Uh, because it is um, a little thinner than, matte, than the gesso, and also it comes in um, matte, matte or gloss. I just happen to have matte, and you can use either. So I'm going to put a little bit in this. You can see it's, it's kind of runny. Um, it's used to glue things. It's used to um, as a wash over the top to seal, it's, um, it's, it's kind of handy to have for a number of reasons, and we're gonna use it uh, quite a bit here. So I'm going to tear some strips. I just have a, I don't even know what this is, some kind of um, thing from an ad or a magazine, and I'm just gonna, I like the torn edges, um, so I'm kind of a random person, so I'm just gonna tear some, strips here and let it kind of do its thing and maybe I'll do some cross, I'll do some weaving so on this piece. You can do as many of these samples as you want. Um, sometimes it's nice to just to have the pieces with just a little bit. So this music one, there's just a little bit on there and then a, a little bit more. So, you know, you have more than, of course, than you would if you had a little bit. Um, that's kind of redundant. But um, the idea being that you have choices. So I'm just going to glue these on with the matte medium. And I'm putting it on the paper because my pieces are kind of odd. And then I'll see what doesn't stick. Okay, that fit good. And then I'll stick that one on. And then I'm kind of, I kind of like this way of fitting things. I don't have to measure, I just make it work that way. And <clears throat> then I'm gonna come on top of it with another layer. Paper, ha all paper has a grain to it, even cheap papers. Um, so if you wet one side, at, you've noticed the, how it uh, curls, the wet side um, curls, and um, this, if you wet both sides, it helps 
uh, prevent that curling for one. But this is also sealing it in. And if you didn't get that um, matte medium under the edges, all the edges, it's now affixed. So that's, that's uh, a paper one. And again, you can, um, you can certainly work and do some weaving and see and put more paper, try that. Lots of different ideas and ways. Just These are just sort of like story starters. Um, you certainly can play and do um, a lot more. Uh, playing with the, I call it playing, but playing with your, um, your tools, your uh, materials, is always a good way to be, become more familiar. And as you know, most of you are, have worked with a lot of different types of art, but you hear people say, oh, I could never do that. Well, if they play like this to start, if you just play with your materials, it, you start to feel more confident. So this one, I coated the paper with matte medium, and I'm going to actually do, I just, I have these two colors of tissue paper, so I, my thought was I would put um, both colors on. So I'm just going to kind of bunch it up a little bit so it fits on the, the paper. And then I'm going to take this sheet. Well, first I'm going to run over the top of this. And it begins to flatten those. I'm getting some texture. And it flattens out that uh, this bumps in this piece, the ripples, and I still have plenty over there. And then I'm going to add this lighter color over the top and do the same kind of ripple on that tour there. I'll just cover that over. And I just thought it might be kind of interesting to have the two different, two different colors. Um, and so I'll finish this up by going over the top of the whole thing with the matte medium. And make that all nice and solid, a solid surface, even though it, it does have ridges in it. But those will be fun when we go, you know, think about over painting that or adding another layer, how those ridges would perform. Um, that would, could be really fun, so there we go. And like I said, there's different kinds of papers. This is a, a bought um, handmade paper, but it's got some threads and, and it tears so lovely. Look at all that fuzz edge. I love that. So uh, I mentioned that I don't have a punch, poor me. Uh, so what I did was just the old um, fold it in an accord, fold it. Um, I did a couple of folds. Let's see if I can do it again. Yeah. So, just kind of an accordion. And then I cut out just some images. I'm just going to do something kind of simple this time. And some squares. And let those be different sizes. Kind of give it some variety. Maybe I'll do a triangle for a different, different look here. Okay, so then I have, as it falls to the floor, I have some different shapes to put on here. And I would, again, glue these on with matte medium so I could have a, um, just something different to work with, a surface. Oh, I use the same paper. And then when you open this out, that's kind of a fun, fun piece as well. So you can uh, use your matte medium and just adhere that to your surface as well. So you adhere it with it and then cover over the top. So those are, those are two different ways. If you had a punch, you could just punch designs and use it the same way, the paper that you punch it out of and the designs that you punch. So that is paper surfaces. There's lots more I'm sure we could say about it. Um, 
But that gives you, an, a, a, this is a start to see how um, different papers could be used. Still doing okay, everyone? Okay. All right, so now, moving along. We're doing really well. Um, any questions so far? You can unmute if you want to ask a question. Any questions? Uh, I don't have a question, but it would probably be helpful for me if I uh, watch the uh, YouTube video. Watch the what? The, when you get the YouTube video made. Okay. It would be helpful for me to watch. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. Are you gonna are you gonna do the YouTube video? Yes, and I'll have direction I'll send you directions too. Am I going too okay. fast? Am I going too fast, Rob? I can slow down. Uh, I'll try to do and watch at the same time. It's okay. A bit okay. Okay. I, that's fair. I will I'll slow down a little bit. Um, if you have because we have time to slow down. Hey, it's good to see everybody. Yeah, isn't it? Good. Yeah, it is. It's been a long time. That's right. If you have uh, your photocopies, that's the next thing we're going to work with. I found these lovely little towhees, so I'm using those for my next piece. And shall I give you a minute to get that together? We'll do this on watercolor paper as well. Are you doing okay, uh, Audrey? Dale? Yeah, I'm just watching to like get some supplies, that's it. Okay, okay. And like I say, I'll have the, I'll have the video for you, so, um, and the directions. So you, sh I knew I was gonna go a little fast, but I've got a lot I wanna show you. <laughs> and these are, you may have done this, these are fun, fun little pro in process kind of pieces to give you a lot more to work with. So they will, um, and I, a lot of times, um, I couldn't stop, like, like the, I showed you this piece, I just couldn't stop with two colors. This was one of the slap, slap them together and pull apart, well, then I just kept going. So you'll discover things as you work, um, that, you, you know, I had a bubble wrap that was already loaded with blue, so boy, I had to try it on something else. So you just keep, you just kind of keep trying things. But make sure, it, it's nice to keep a record of it. I know it's hard, but a record is really a, a great thing um, to refer back to. And we, I do, you know, in the fiber arts, it's, it's we, Kathy can tell you, we, in the fiber class, we have, the, we do a lot of sample work. So, um, but then you know what, you know, Go back, what, how did I do that? Oh, right, I have this piece and I can add that to this if I want to. Okay, so um, with, the, with the photocopy, uh, what we're gonna do is we're going to um, glue them down with the matte medium and then run that over the surface. And then we're going to add um, I have the, like I said, I have the white gesso. Uh, if you don't have white gesso, just a wash of white acrylic would do, do the same thing in um, two different, um, put that right, two different um, strengths, just to see what happens if you kind of um, del start deleting that photo, a little push to the background. Uh, I use something kind of colorful for the first, this one. I'm going to see how this bird performs with that. Um, so the first thing, I, I didn't find photos that I wanted that filled the whole page, but I figured that was okay. That would give me a chance to do something more over here if I wanted to. Because I really like the Tohi. I might just do something else with him. So again, using the um, matte medium, to go up, to glue the piece down. And that, 
Um, I really like this matte medium because it flows on so nicely. It's really easy to glue with. And it gives it a little extra, um, a little extra body when it's dry. The, the piece has got a little more um, weight to it, which is nice. And once I glue him on there, then I'm going to add a layer over the top. I guess I wouldn't need to, well, this one I'm gonna add a layer over the top. The next two, I'm gonna add the gesso, that's right. Okay, so he's done, and that's, he's just gonna stay like that. And then these two, I'm gonna do glue it and then do some gesso over the top. So this, these is, uh, this is a, uh, you know, an experiment to see sort of how to, how this all works. And I've already, of course I have these on my work desk, so these guys, these guys both have a little extra gesso on, on them. We'll see how that works. So. Get this glued on, and then I'll mix up some, some gesso. Uh, you, you, of course, you can think about, um, again, if you wanted to, there'd be no reason you couldn't use a color over the top of it. Part, partly uh, with the what I said before, the gesso and the matte medium going over the surface of it keeps it from soaking in. So we're going to try the, the next thing we're going to do is actually we're going to try a few things that um, we, we experiment with that. How does it just uh, perform if it, we don't seal it first? So this I'm going to do um, just a little bit of gesso and I think what I'm going to do is rinse out a brush, so I have a brush to work with. And add a little water to that, just a little bit of water. So just about as much water as the gesso, just to give it a little... Um, uh, well, that's actually quite a lot of water. That's pretty runny. But for the first one, I think that'll be fine. I just I don't want um, I don't want it too heavy on this one. Oh, I forgot. Okay, so that's what the sandpaper is for. Uh, where'd my sandpaper go? Or not? No, there it is. Okay, so because, of, because this is a, it's got a slick surface, this, a real fine sandpaper, you can just lightly run over the image and then your, um, your gesso won't bubble up, beat up like that. Hopefully, let's see if that's enough sanding. Yeah. Kind of doing it's doing it a little bit, but I'm not going to be too particular about putting this on at this point. I'm going to make sure I work quickly so I can. I like to just come on top and give it a little wipe. I can control the amount of gesso on it better. So there's my second layer, and he's he's going into the background um, compared to the first one. He's sort of disappearing. And then the third one, I'll be, uh, I'll be heavier with that yet. And in order to do that, I'm going to add just a little more gesso to what I had. And I'm probably still going to do the wiping because I, I think I can control it better. Um, 
So let's see what, oh, I forgot to sand it again. All right, so sanding first. And then painting, sanding, then painting. I was up in Nebraska for Labor Day at a ranch in the Sand Hills by the Niobrara River, and there were lots of little nut of these little towhees floating around. Okay, so I'm going to, actually, I kind of like that. I could give it some texture if I wanted, but I'm just going to kind of wipe a little bit. So there he's even more compared to this guy. You see how he's pushed, pushed even further back into more of a, um, a pattern versus a, an actual image. Also, I mean, there might be a reason you want to make uh, the image, push the image into the background uh, because it might be that you want to duplicate it and have it come become clearer or it might be that that image is uh, is just not as important as a as a main focal point something else on top of it but when you look it's that look and look again um, there's something to see that's, that's you know you really have to concentrate where what is that back there okay okay Oh, I have a couple more things. Um, so, this project, we're still working with watercolor paper. And for this one, this is your kind of, this, is, this can be your homework. So, just like we applied gesso and paint to these surfaces for this next um, this next one is about washes so you, you want to um, prepare I guess nine pieces of watercolor paper and these are what did I say these were like four by five and um, they're not very big they're card size so these pieces are just gesso this one's combed. You can use some of the same techniques you used with these painted pieces. This is uh, sort of drawn through. Here's another. This one is drawn through with a, the paintbrush. This is the bottle cap. Just kind of going through with the bottle cap. Um, any of those techniques, just with gesso. This one was... Um, this one was slapped together with another piece so you get some texture. And this one was, um, I put the gesso on, I don't know if you, can you see that? And then I printed on it. Stuck a, a stamp into it. So uh, I have stamps that I've made. So like this stamp, I could just stamp into the gesso and pull up and it leaves a, a mark in it. So you want to do nine pieces of that and then um, let those dry. So what I'm going to do is I'm just, today, I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about making the washes. And um, the, for that, we'll be using the inks. So these are acrylic inks and they already have, they're already liquid. But the idea of a wash is uh, that you are adding water and making it just a, a lighter, um, a lighter uh, application of the, the color. So um, you, would, you can experiment. I did about maybe about half and half. And then you can do some acrylics with water as well. Um, these are... There's, a, there's a, a nice little list of things you can do. This one you can see, I added the gesso in dots. I thought that was fun. And I put a light wash on it first and let that dry. 
and then added a dark wash over the top. So you'll experiment with these. This is another, um, this one I did, uh, the gesso's kind of bark-like, but I did the same color. I put on one wash, the same, and then I kept adding, I couldn't stop on this one. I added about three layers of the same color and let it puddle up in different areas. So that's fun. You'll, you'll, as you experiment, you'll, you'll have to get some more ideas. This one was just darn ugly. I hated it because I did purple and then I added a mustard. Oh, that was awful. So then I kept going until I kind of, I don't mind it now. It's a combed piece and the color is really unusual, but I, I don't mind it so much. Um, you'll play with this list. You'll play with sponging it. You'll play with spraying it. Um, you'll play with light on dark and dark on light. This is a bottle, the bottle cap one. You'll play with um, using the ink washes versus the acrylic washes. Here's another where it was the same color just over and over. That's that stamped piece. Um, you, add, you add paints in different areas just to give it a little different look. You'll work with acrylic and ink, which is kind of, which is fun too. Um, I could play with these all day. I love these. These were just so much fun to do. And there's another where it's it's uh, just applied in, in a few areas, but it's a green with a yellow over the top. And this one was unusual, but I really I really rather like this one. It's just a kind of an odd color, but it was, I can't even, I mean, it was green and pink and not even sure how that black, I guess I kept adding the green. I wrote, only wrote down pink and green, so maybe that's it. And that, that's going to be for, that's on the inner homework. Um, and I'll send that to you. Because we couldn't get all that done today. Um, let's see. So I have, I have one more thing I wanted to show you. Any questions while I'm prepping this? is uh, using the, the chipboard or the cracker boxes. Apparently I like Triscuits. I'm really in the Triscuits right now. So the, just that's a chipboard and it's really easy to, you know, to find. Um, well, look, here's a coffee filter box. So, you know, chipboard's pretty, you can buy it. But for now, I just think uh, this is, works so well. Why? So what we're going to play with is, um, eh, when I start dropping things, I think it's about time to end. Okay, so the, here's the look of the pieces that we're going to make. So they're a little different. Here's another, let's see, that's a little funky. And here's one more. And these are a little curved. I can flatten these out, but again, wetting that one side just kind of does that. So, what we're going to do is, this is another one you'll need to do for homework. So, I prepared three pieces with this lovely kind of Sienna brown that I mixed up. And I'm going to use gesso. And uh, this, the first one, let's see, what will I do with the first one? I think the first one I'm just going to use a piece of bubble wrap. It, it just randomly putting 
some some in a not all not to cover the whole thing just in some areas so you could use a sponge um, however you want to I'm just going to use this bubble wrap because it's right here handy and I, that's that's it I'm going to let that dry and I'm going to experiment I cut some stencils these stencils I do the same way, this is cardstock, and I do the same way, I cut, uh, fold them in half, and then cut out something, and I just want a, a simple geometric shape to start with is really uh, a nice workable piece, so I'm going to lay that stencil down, and I have a stencil brush, or you could use a stencil brush, or you could use their flat round. Um, it's a fancy tool, but you could use your sponge again or a brush. Any way you can, you have to be careful with a brush that you're not brushing under the edges. You want to come down from the top. So that's what a stencil brush allows you to do is just pocket on here and just let you kind of fill that in. And then you can pull it up and you've got yourself square. The other experiment we're going to do with the stencil, this little one, is we're going to, going to let it go off the edge. So I'm going to use this little one a couple of different places, but I'm going to let it fall off the page as well as be on the page. You'd use the same action with the sponge. It's a little tricky, but you don't really have to worry too much about it. Any excess, that's just another, another goodie to look at. So, gives it a, a different feel, um, as if it's going off into space. And I would let those dry and this is another homework, so after that dries, then you add a, a, um, a layer of wash with either ink or um, acrylic. And this is acrylic. This is ink. And this is ink. So different looks, a little bit different looks. It's kind of, it's really, it's just fun to play with and it does give it a little bit different look. So, and these I did kind of small pieces because I didn't see, I didn't see cutting these up. So you don't have to have huge pieces. Um, and these I didn't do a wash with first and I wanted to try the, or I didn't do, yeah, I didn't do the wash first. So I kind of wanted to just try it without the wash first and see what it was like, just to um, just to, to play and experiment. So, you know, you can make up your own game as well. Okay, we're almost out of time. Any questions, comments? Where, yeah, this is Kathy. Um, where do you get your ink? Um, I, I bought them online, but I, I, they have them at Michael's. Okay. Um, Michael's has a lot of these supplies. I bought, uh, uh, the, the watercolor paper I bought, I didn't bring it in today, but I bought a, a pack of bigger postcard size and cut that in half. So the postcards would be size was like nine by yeah. nine by six or something. And I just thought that was really handy. And it was 50 sheets for $9 and I got a hundred sheets. And yeah, I like 10 by seven. So. Well, you could cut those down. I mean, if you have something in it, and it, they recommend inexpensive to start with because you're, you're playing and you don't want to, you don't want to feel like you're wasting money. Nobody does. So I understand that. <laughs> Betsy? Yes. This is Gail. Can I use, uh, I bought some of the marbling Japanese ink. Can I use that? Um, 
you know, I my my first thought is I wouldn't because you would you you can, but I I don't know about the expense of it. Whether it would be better just to save those and use them for what they're meant for. I mean, oh. if you don't want to buy any more, it, yes. But if you want to save them and actually use them for what, for that, I mean, that's that's your call. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Long. Hey, we'll meet in class. Will we ever do that or? Uh, not for this one. Not for this one. No. No, I mean, I mean, in the future. I mean, like yeah. October, or December. I don't know. I don't know, Lonnie. Don't know. I don't know. Okay. I, I know there's some meetings going on at the library, but I didn't know yeah. if it was due to uh, capacity, crowd, or what. It's limitations. Yeah. And well, it's also you know who would who wants to come. So um, right. We're making it trying to making it safe for everyone. So some people don't. Right. Have no, I understand. Them. Yeah. I picked up some nice ink from uh, Michaels. Uh, okay. I like the Daler Rowdy, but I'm not sure they carry that. Okay. But uh, mostly Liquitex, I believe I've got from uh, Michael's. Okay. Good. Good. Audrey, do you have anything to add in here? No, not right now. <laughs> okay. You doing okay. You doing okay? Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's. It's something, but it's good to see you, and it's you know it's nice to be able to get together this way. So I, I'm you know I hope in future. When's the last time we were together? March. Yes. Yes. Wow. And Lonnie, do you want to share your your story? Oh, I, I have since I've been gone. I've I've uh, had a heart attack and had three stents put in. And also, uh, my ex-wife, she died of that COVID-19. Oh, oh. And uh, that was uh, not too long ago. And, uh, and then uh, lost my father-in-law. And uh, mm. so I've had a, I had a really busy year already. Mm. Yeah, that's a lot. That's a lot. Everybody else, yeah. everybody else doing okay? or? I'm doing good now, and uh, things are going good. Well, good. Yeah, good. And see, I want to thank you for this. Oh, well, you're welcome. It's fun for me, too. <laughs> I miss it. I miss, I miss being with everybody, and I miss, I miss us doing oh, the work yeah. together. So this is, as, this is as good as it gets, but... Um, if you know, I can slow down if you would like me to, or like to work along with me more. I, you know, I can, I can. I just had so much to show you. <laughs> Actually, they do get slower as we go along. We go through these samples pretty quickly, and but let me know. You don't have to tell me right down to my face or anything, but email me or let me know if you think definitely if I should go a little slower. I will. Or just shout out in class because I can. So, so there we have it. <laughs> thank you. Well, yeah, well, yeah, thank you. Well, thanks to everybody for coming. It's been a it's been a good time to just to share. It's good seeing everybody. Yeah, Lonnie, you it take is. care. Uh, take care, thank Dale. you. Bye bye. Bye, Rob. Bye, bye Kelly. Bye bye. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye.